Welcome to the first ever Whiskey of the Year for 2022. 2022, although it's still 2021. Well, Flat Cap Whiskey. Inaugural flat, episode. Flat Cap Whiskey. Inaugural episode, Whiskey of the Year, 2022. Right at you. Here we go. Do, 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 do. All right, so... And like, we're going to go over the whiskeys that were in each of our categories before we made our choice of the whiskey of the year for each of us, because we each have a whiskey of the year. Should we're going to open up with Brandon first. We're, so my criteria mm -hmm. of choosing my whiskey of the year, uh, I wanted something that was good, affordable, Obviously. easy to get. You know, I don't want to, you know. I don't know. I feel like it needs to be affordable. Make sure everyone can have it. Something that tastes good at least. And uh, is enjoyable. Um, you want me to go into my thing or you want to explain your criteria? Yeah, I'll explain my thing. So I, li I like your criteria. It's pretty good. I don't really care if it's affordable and easy to find, okay? It's my whiskey of the year. It's like my marks, okay? It's like my marks. I'm going to make my own rules. So... Yes, I chose on which scotches I preferred throughout the year. Yep. Cost didn't mean anything to me, nor did availability. So I think you'd be able to find it if you search hard enough for some of these. But some of them are easy to find. So that's, but the one I chose may not be as easy to find. Depends where you live, obviously. But I liked it. Um, I like the taste. I like the smell. I'm not the best at doing that differentiation, but I'm willing to admit that. And I went with what I felt was best. So we'll go to Brandon now. Go ahead and tell us about the choices that you selected for the whiskey of the year. So first of all, they're not on. They're not up here. They're not being displayed. Our whiskey of the year. They're under under the counter. Don't want you knowing yet. So these are my honorable mentions, in my opinion. Okay. So. Um. My whiskey. Or honorable mentions of scotches that I liked were the Springbank 10, the Ardbeg Scorch, non-committee, and I you know what I, I had to do it. Kleinleash 14. Kleinleash 14, the one where you have to add lots of water before it opens up. Actually, I'd say after that episode, I did pour it in, and I just put just a little bit of water and let it actually sit. How long did you let it sit? Probably 10 minutes, maybe 20. Okay, it's not too bad. Just so I didn't water it down so, so I can see if it gets the same thing, and it did. It just, if you add more water, it comes out a lot quicker. Um, which, you know, Klein Leash 14 is a uh, Diageo product, you know. Um, what is it? 46% alcohol. Ardbeg Scorch is, where is it? 46 as well. Interesting. And then of course Springbank Ten. Being Springbank is so it's so good. Springbank makes the best scotches all over all. Is also forty six percent. Look at that. Yeah, you got a forty six percent um, lineup. Lineup, awesome. Well, here's my choices. So my honorable mentions, I guess from an affordability standpoint, one of our blind reviews that we had done was Isle of Mist. Very inexpensive, highly easy to find, and I do love Isle of Mist. I think it's one of my Favorites? I think it's a, uh, what is the word I'm looking for? Uh, not, I guess underdog? underdog? Definitely an underdog. Definitely an underdog, but underrated. It, it should be a super dog. If they just put that and make it like aged and will age it, but you know, put no caramel in, color in there and actually unchilled filtered, it would probably be. I think it would be great. It would be, but it might cost more money. My other choice was Lefroy 10. I love Lefroy. Lefroy 10 was my scotch that got me to. A, love scotch, and B, maybe fall in love with peated whiskeys. I should also point out, it is the cast strength. This is the true, true. It's the cast strength. It is 60.1% alcohol. So, actually, the canister recommends you add 50% water to this to open it up completely and to reach its maximum enjoyment. I've never done that with it. I didn't really want to water it down that much, but it's delicious. I love it. I love the high APB. And then Ardbeg. 
Ardbeg is fantastic. Ardbeg is no, non-chill filtered, no natural color. And this is 51.8% alcohol. It is the committee release. It is the committee release. I enjoyed it very much. So these are my three honorable mentions. And there was, was there one other one I looked at as well? I'm trying to think. I did Ardbeg. It was, the, it was the normal. Oh, the one I chose, which I cannot reveal at this time. That's top secret until we get to the end of the video. So while you're waiting for us to reveal our choice for Whiskey of the Year of 2022, subscribe. Comment. Comment. Like. Please. Hit the like button. Smash it. Smash it. Swish it. Slam it. Whatever you want to do. But we need some more subscriptions, I think. Oh, yeah. We need, yeah. We need yeah. a lot more. Yeah. Hey. It'll come. What was it? Was it? Uh, I was going to say the longer, you, the more you wait, the more it will come. <laughs> we don't have that much but listen we're having fun here we hope you enjoy our videos but let's go into more detail on your whiskey of the year so i think everyone will be very surprised on what i chose he was kind of surprised i believe yeah i was surprised i was very surprised but i don't i don't doubt how good this whiskey is. This scotch is a very good choice you made. And the, would we say the blender of this whiskey that you chose is phenomenal. It is a very good I blender. I mean, every bottle that he puts together, hands down, is one. Is probably one of the best. Exactly. In that price range. Like, you know, my, what is it? my brother was very, he says, I was very ballsy for putting this on there. Very ballsy. Very different. You know, I'm not, ch I'm not, you know, picking the Chegg 10 like everyone. The Chegg 10. The Chegg 10 or, you know, like Ralphie chose and... John Andre, didn't he choose it? Uh, I think John Andre... Because he had two. He had a peated side and non-peated side. I think he chose the Chegg 10. Did he? His non-peated. And I think Kleinly 14 was actually his, his other one too. His non-peated, I believe, okay. or something. But... Uh, Kleinly doesn't deserve to be mentioned. I think, Klein, dude, we drank most of it. I almost, yeah, I, I did. Almost was, was, I did drink most of it because I didn't want to drink my other it stuff. It was tough because I was like, hmm, you know what? John Andre really liked it. John and the Andre's more I good. sat on it, the more I actually liked it. It's like gone almost. It's just, damn, that prickly pear and just the floral, the fruity notes that just come out of it. It does have prickly pear. You add the right amount of water in, that prickly pear does come out. Absolutely. Now, I think I'm kind of like, you know, re going over all this again, but. Uh, the reason why, if I really had to choose it, I think Ardbeg Scorch would have been my my whiskey of the year. What does he mean, really had to choose it? He did really have to choose it. He, cho he chose. I chose over it, this, this product over it. Why? The reason why I didn't make it, because you can't find it. Mm -hmm. It's not cheap. But if you do, if you yeah, happen to stumble across and able to have it, I think it's way better than that Ardbeg that like he thinks. I think Arbeg nailed this one out of the park. Nailed it. It just, it just, it's just so oaky and mm -hmm. oh, so smoky. It, it's smoky. It literally tastes like a fire, like a uh, like a campfire, in my opinion. Mm -hmm. And then there's the Springbank Ten. Springbank is special. Springbank, again. It is it affordable? Not in the United States, in my opinion. It's like eighty dollars when it should be. I think it's supposed to be like fifty or sixty. Bucks. I think that's affordable. Yeah, but if you can't find it in an area, which most people aren't, can't, unless you really live can't. in like the city, like major cities. Yeah, the only other place I found Springbank was out in, of all places, Plattsburgh, New York. Yes. Um, but you know, every time you ask, you go to any any liquor store in your mm -hmm. area and you say, "Hey, can you can they can you get Springbank for uh, you able to get like." Find your distributor and get Spring Bank, and the no. first question, the first thing answer they get is, "What's that?" Yeah, what's that? I what's that? They don't, they so don't know what it is, which is, it just blows my mind. I think that's a sign that if, if you go to a liquor store and they don't know what Spring Bank is and they sell scotch, I think you should turn around and leave and go somewhere else. I'm really getting to that point because Spring Bank is one of the best distilleries in Scotland. Again, also, um, so I said what affordable the price the hard to find mm -hmm. and um uh what was my other criteria i can't remember right now i'm drawing a blank currently 
affordability, price, or availability. Availability. Well, anyway, this was. I was also pretty damn close. It's just so. It just at first I kind of didn't really care for it mm-hmm. when I first had it, and I think I gave it an eighty-five still or an eighty-six. Um, I do prefer it over the the uh, cast strength of the twelve. Um, but but I mean, you open this bottle and you pour that glass, it just hits you with fruity notes. Mm-hmm. It's it's you put the side to like I had to put the side to side of my whiskey of the year, and I you know I you know I mixed them around, I did all that. Lady ADHD whiskey going on and. The moment I picked it up, I immediately was able to tell which whiskey it was between the Springbank and the one I picked. Mm-hmm. Like it just opened up florally, like it just, just blasted you in the face. Springbank does have that unique scent to it. But anyway, as we found out, the camera had shuts off randomly for some reason. So to make this real. <laughs> Why don't you go over your whiskey of the year? You want me to tell them which I chose? Well, that's, I would assume that's what you were right, doing so with the camera shut off. Yeah. So my whiskey of the year choice comes down to something that I like best. And that is cast strength. Don't care about price. Don't care about availability. Drum roll. <laughs> Spring Bank 12 cast strength. That was my choice. As I said, I love Springbank. I think it's the best distillery in Scotland. Cast strength, love the alcohol level. Has that classic Springbank scent, even though you do get that burst of alcohol, but it's not overpowering, even though, what is the APV on this? ABV? It is 56.1%. So it's pretty high. It's pretty up there. This is my favorite. I love this, and I have drank a lot of it because it's almost all gone. And it only has opened up and gotten better over time. And I can't wait to get another bottle. However, I did have to have this special order. You did. I did, because I couldn't get it around here. You cannot. It is very good. I, well, I do prefer the 10 over the, the 12 calf strength, in my opinion. It doesn't do it for me as much as the 10 year old. That 10. Oh. God, it just, it's so good. It's way better than that. Even though it's at 46%, oh, damn, it's good. That might be good, too. Oh, it's very good. That was awesome. It wasn't even in my list. Anything else to say about it? Should I? Well, have we, I can't remember. Did you, did you, what was the reason why you chose that over that, the cast strength of Freud and the Ard Bank? Hmm. I think the reason why I chose this one was because for me, stepping out of the box is not going with the peat. Okay. The heavily peated scotches. Um, I, but I love about Springbank. And I, I bet you I pick Springbank something every year. Come moving on. My whiskeys of the year are gonna probably always going to be Springbank. I love Springbank. It's very fresh. It's a very refreshing scotch. Right? Farmyard smell. Tastes like, like this freshly baled hay. Right? It's just... It's a gorgeous, if a scotch can be gorgeous, it's Springbank. Any one of them. Absolutely. So, I mean, I really don't have anything else to add other than I love Springbank. I thought Springbank 12 cast strength was the best of the Springbanks I've tasted this year and that I possess a bottle of because Long Row was pretty damn good too. I don't know anything about Long Row. Long Row 18, which I had late last, no, early, early, oh, it was probably 2020 that I had it. It's been a while. All right. Your turn. His is good. Mine might be better. <laughs> oh, All right. Here we go. Here we go. This is where the comedy begins. Availability, price, taste. Hey, it's not. A, you know, it's not about quality. Sure it is. Well, it is about quality. <laughs> sure it, it is. It's about quality. You know, not, not, what, what, what did John Andre say? It's just whiskey. He does say it's just whiskey. But again, he says, uh, it's not about, uh, no matter how much it is, no. What, is, what does he say? I don't know. He oh my God, I'm butchering extent. this. 
Well, anyway, that's why you it always comes down to like just whiskey. You got it down pat. You know? I know. Anyway, it's just whiskey, folks. It's just whiskey. But anyway, my whiskey of the year is pretty close. It's pretty close nearby. Nearby the old Campbelltown. My whiskey of the year. <laughs> my ballsy move. It was ballsy. I'll give him that. And I do love it. I do love this whiskey. This is a very good scotch. Anyway. All right. <laughs> Let's go Take back. Take two. Here we go. So, my whiskey of the year is very close. You know, it's right next door. Wait, you're just right next door. What? But you didn't pick Spring Bank 10. Interesting. Hell, you guys didn't reveal Kill Karen, so what would you pick? Well, my whiskey, my ballsy move. This ballsy move. Is. Get ready for the unveiling. Goldrins. Goldrins. Douglas Lang. Goldrins. He is a great, great blender. So. You'd be like, why did he choose a blend? Who chooses a blend? Chooses single blend? malt all the way. Actually, is this blended? Is this this is, should be a single blend? Single. It's it definitely a Campbelltown. It's a it's a blend of Campbelltown scotches. It is right from dis different distilleries. So it's we don't know exactly what different distilleries it is. No, but anyway, during my review when we were tasting it, I said. It smells like there's spring bank in this. Definitely spring bank in there. It sounds like there's spring bank in there. Is there or is there not? I don't know. But anyway, why did I choose it over that? Or why did I did not choose spring bank 10? Because Brandon's a commie. He Maybe. thinks it should be available for all. As long as you can find it. Golden, it's just... If I had them side by side, I can tell the difference. Of course, you can smell the spring bank. You know, the floor notes. But when you just have this alone, after I finished the spring bank, I had this in my hand and we stepped away for a little bit. Like, you could like, you could smell kind of like this, that's, that spring bank, those floral notes that I was tasting and smelling and my nosing underneath the alcohol. Like, mm -hmm. very low. It's like there. But, I don't know. I mean, he's just, it's just so good. And like this is a very good way of I think Let me if, try. if you can't find this, go for the Goldrins. He's taking my glass. Yeah, it's very floral. But it smells great. It's a wonderful scotch. It really is. It's I think it's like sixty bucks. So you can find it for a little bit cheaper than the Spring Bank, and you know not have to pay shipping if they go out somewhere else. Mm -hmm. You can find it anywhere. You, you can't find it everywhere, but I, you I, can, I, you can I've seen it in at least three or four local. I've seen it in only one place. But, uh... It's very good. It's 46% non-chilled filtered. No natural no, color. No, it's, no. no natural color. There is natural color. That's what I mean. No color added. All natural color. So both of ours, Campbelltowns... They're both... So let's get, so what, I don't think I... I don't know if I mentioned it. I might have again. But again... Campbelltown, this is a very good entry level or easy way to get into Campbelltown. You know what I mean? It's the key to Campbelltown. It's the key to Campbelltown. Key to Campbelltown. There, there could be what? I think there's like, there's Kill Karen. There could be, this is a separate distillery. Mm -hmm. uh, there could be that. There could be uh, Glen Scotia, I believe, which I never had. So there, it, it probably is Glen Scotia blend. It probably, probably is. I think we read a little bit about it in one of my magazines, didn't we? Yeah, I think so, somewhere. But it's 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 damn good. Mm -hmm. I say go out and get it if you can. Um, Highly recommend. Oh, I should also mention, if we're going on a little tangent here, uh, while he was tasting his... I just want to let you know. This is where he embarrasses me because I always fall for the blind taste test. <laughs> I gave it to this four times, different times. I told him, I didn't tell him what the name was the first two. The next two, I told him the name. Each time he did it, he said it was great. And you're like, oh, wow, that is good. That is good. What is it? 
Gold Rins. What? He did. Step he said it was better than this. Better than this. Mind blowing. But Gold Rins is good. It's very good. If you do, there is a lot to say about tasting scotch blind. Right? So I, I do want to. I yeah, I agree. You know, blind is always best if you can. Um, I think we should do more blinds. But I, I want to say that I think blends are coming up, man. There, I think I think that's non age statements. Like blend, like the I guess this is an independent bottler technically, right? That was yeah. playing. Like like look at Isla Mist. Mm. Isla Mist is pretty good. Like if you want to look like a nice peated whiskey and you don't want to spend too much it's money, twenty eight bucks. Yeah, it's it's. It's pretty decent, you know. It's $28. Isla Mist, $28. You're going to enjoy it. I know I did. I, that's why we're on our second bottle. Okay. <laughs> it is It is blended with Lafroy, so you got that. Lafroy, sig- it does taste heavily like Lafroy. I am curious. I would say put that up against a Lafroy Select, maybe, and see how it compares. But again, independent bottlers, I think I think Douglas Lang is our favorite. Well, it's only, I think it's only independent but well, we have three, three of his bottles right now. We got Goldrins, we got Rock Oyster, we got Rock Oyster Cast Strength, and Scallywag. Scallywag, so we have four, but I haven't tried the. He he was hiding the Cast Strength. Because I don't um, want him touching it yet. I'd like to try it. Well, anyway, Douglas Lang, keep doing what you're doing. Other distilleries, step up, man. Step it up. Step it up. And you'll keep the. If you're going to give us a non age statement scotch. From Lafroig or wherever, even like Bruclati has not. No, do they, no, they have age statements. Do they? Yeah, well, the class line doesn't have one. No, so anything Some with non age, but Lafroig is Lafroig has expensive non age statement Scotch choices. Lafroig lore. It's not worth paying a hundred plus dollars for something without an age statement. I don't like that. So what about the yard bag then? The Ardbeg? The Ardbeg and the Scorch. You know, I can give Ardbeg a little bit of a pass, and I'm going to tell you why. Although I, I do agree with you. <laughs> it doesn't have an age statement. But it's non chill filtered. Although Lafroig's are too. No, they're not. Actually, Benito's No, they're not. Lafroig 10 is, is chill filtered. Again, all right, so what other thing besides Lore and Select does Lafroig sell that doesn't have an age statement on it? Nothing. No, no, but it's annoying. I don't want you to have pay the $100 some dollars they, for you, lore. You have, have, anyway, you have the 10. You have the 10 cast strength. Mm-hmm. You have the 10 sherry oak finish. Mm-hmm. Oh, you have the triple. You have the carches, the triple. Yeah, you're right. Oh, yeah, you know, yeah, you also, have, you also have the quarter cask. The quarter cask, that's yeah. right. So, and, and, and it's chill filtered. No, it's not. They are not chill filtered. Yes, I, I, no way. Okay, next, next time we do a video, you can go ahead and correct me if I'm wrong. I'm not wrong. If I'm wrong, I'm mistaken because I'm never wrong. But with that being said, Ardbeg natural color, non-chill filtered. I think it's more reliable. Ardbeg to me, although Lafroy turned me over to Pete and really got me to love scotch, Ardbeg, I believe, is better than Lafroy. I do agree with that, actually. Yeah. Ardbeg, I do agree with that. Ardbeg is my favorite peated scotch distillery. Springbank is my favorite. They have some peated and unpeated distillery. I love both those distilleries, and I'd be willing to pay the price to get those, as long as it's not too exorbitant. You know, I'm not going to pay. <laughs> okay, I may pay a little over two hundred, but I'm not going to pay two fifty or more. Of course, inflation is going to impact that, and I may have to like not buy other scotches to save money to buy some of this better stuff because I'd rather enjoy it but I will always if I'm short on cash I'm going to Isla Mist that's all I can say all right. Isla Mist is a kick-ass kick-ass scotch so whiskey of the year Goldrins and Spring Bank 12, 12 cast, cast strength both Camel Towns go out and find it um I just wanted to make a little side note before we sign off here John Andre he will not Review a Johnny Walker besides Green Label. I can understand you don't want to tiptoe on that heathen heathen stuff, but you know what you gotta you, you listen, gotta venture out, man. 
How many people go to a bar and the bar only has Johnny Walker Black? I mean, it's common. Doers, you know, Shiv is 12, maybe. But Johnny Walker is one of the most common scotches that's in a bar, especially if they don't specialize in, mm. you know, scotch whiskey. So I would say... Give it a shot. Give it a shot. I want to know your actual opinion on it. Right, you got to start at the bottom to rise to the top. You know, Ralph Cramden always said, you're going to meet the same people on the way up, and you're going to meet the same people on the way down. So Johnny Walker is always going to be the bottom of the battle. <laughs> Especially the red, but you know, let's be honest. We did our review. The the was it the eighteen? You liked the eighteen. The eighteen was a very was it was very good. I would buy it if it was reasonably priced. What's the price now? Do you think? I, I can't remember what it was. It's definitely not as much as the blue. I'm not going to spend two hundred bucks on a blue. No, blue. no way, no way. Oh yeah, I forgot to mention the black is also twelve years. We didn't mention that in the video. Oh, it is twelve years. It is. It is twelve years. Okay, it's got an age. So statement? the black, the green. And the 18, and I think the only ones that are age dated. Okay, so I, mean, I think Johnny Walker is worth reviewing. Johnny Walker Red, no, don't maybe not. Yeah, you can skip that. You can skip Johnny Walker Red. Go right to Black and go and work your way up. But you know what? Yeah. Hey, John Andre knows what he's talking about. I'm not going to say he's wrong. He may be mistaken, but you know what? It's just whiskey. It's no just big whiskey, deal. folks. No big whoop. Enjoy. Have a great New Year, and we're looking forward to making more videos as we go. Slam the like button, subscribe, comment, comment, tell everybody how funny I am, funny. although he's sucking the humor out of me re recently. But my my New Year's resolution. Not pick a to, Campbelltown whiskey for next year. Is to, is to learn more about Scotch whiskey. And we'll see, maybe we'll try to do some, do some more different things like a, uh, I would still want to do that bottom of the barrel thing. Bottom of the barrel, our big lineup, which we still have. Yep, the the the, the Johnny Walker was our test run of that. Mm -hmm. um, maybe do some more head to heads. You know, and blinds, we gotta do some blinds. More blinds. Um, I, I really think you learn a lot most from the blinds because there's no preconceived ideas of what it is. Maybe do a best of the worst style. You know, red letter media. Take some really, really bad whiskeys. <laughs> And having to defend which one's the better one. I think that's a good one. Uh, you know, Black Velvet. Um, it's going to be terrible. I bet you Black Velvet would be surprising. Maybe. But anyway, have a good year. Go get one of these whiskey, the scotches. Flat happy cap, New Year. Happy, happy New Year. Flat cap out. Flat cap whiskey out.